This is it. Episode 498. Of, yes. <laughs> it's so random. If somebody's on video right now, you should see the look on her face right there. 498 <laughs> No Laugh Track Podcast. I'm Justin <laughs> Severson, the host here at Acme Comedy Company in Minneapolis. We do this each and every week uh, with the headliner. And this week, it's Erica Rhodes. Hi, Erica. Hi, Justin. Here we go. 498 with you. I'm almost 500. I, I think that's that was my reaction. I was like, oh, I'm almost at the sweet spot. The sweet spot. I know. Yeah. Yep. We're, uh, look ahead. Well, I'm looking the calendar. Maybe people can guess who the 500. We have no idea who it's going to be. We, Some we go lucky week to week person. With, we go week to week with this thing. We don't know who it's going to be. Some big shot. Yeah. Uh, but welcome back. Thanks for having me. Sorry, I sipped right at that I, moment. I know. I, I really jumped in. I, I really got aggressive. <laughs> Thanks with you. for welcome having me. Uh, a little less than a year from the last time. Yes. I, I mean, it's a little too soon is what I'm saying. Oh, you're you're like oh her again. I wasn't ready. I'm not. I wasn't going to be ready to this until June. You've done two Junes in a row, and here That's you are. That's crazy. In April. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm kidding. I'm I'm. I love that you're here. Oh, I love coming back. This is the best. And this is kind of a huge week for you. Yeah, I'm doing my second album. Awesome. Congrats. Thank you. How did you know you were ready? I don't. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, the so the last time I canceled it actually last year because I. At this last second, I just didn't feel ready. And then this year, I was like, I don't know if I'm ready again, but I'm still doing it. Was it scheduled for here last year? Yeah. It was. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and I had one great show that probably could have been the album. And I just, I don't know what was in my mind. I was kind of not mentally in a state to commit to some of the material, maybe. Sure. So, yeah. So, I was like, I'll just try again. But now, I'm like, why do I feel the same? A little bit the same. Have you talked to other uh, comedians about that? Like, is this, yeah. am I supposed to feel this way? I've talked to some, and some say, yeah, you never quite feel ready. Did someone blow know. that and go like, yeah, you, some people follow have... that, you're not ready. Well, actually, a lot of comics seem to wait a long time, especially for albums. You know, people do specials, it seems, more than albums. Isn't that y- interesting? People don't even know what an album is. Like, I had a friend say, what is an album? And I was like, honestly, I don't really know. I t- it's a recording. It's like about an hour. Right. It's all together. Yeah. You do it. It's a show. Yeah. And you record it, and then you can splice it together if one show's better than another. And so but, what? Are, yeah. What are what are we doing here this week then? A special. No, I'm doing an album. An album that it, that will be cut into things and put out there is what you're saying. Yeah, something's gonna be out there. <laughs> something's gonna be out there. <laughs> okay. Something will be out there. I mean, it, it's an hour. I would say it's about 50 minutes. Okay. I have about 50 minutes of material, and it's new from other things I've done. Right. So it is all new fr- from that. What if What if you would have recorded a year ago? How much has changed from a year ago? Well, that's what I'm trying... Like, it's a mystery, because I can't seem to find the recording from last year, and I feel like I'm missing... I'm forgetting jokes. There has Just to be more than one recording, Erica. From last year? Yeah. I can't find it. Really? Yeah. I think, well, we recorded it here, I think, but then we, but and then they sent it to me, and now I can't find it. Interesting. What's your it's normal, like uh, do you normally, re- so you don't normally record, like, just for yourself? No, I do. Night, I, I, what, good idea. I'll, what I'll do is I'll listen. <laughs> Great idea. I'm going to go listen back to a year from now and see what jokes I was doing yeah. a year ago. Yeah. Not, it doesn't have to have been here. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Research project. Yes. You have time for that, right? Yeah. I've got three hours before the show. (laughs) I can figure out what jokes I'm forgetting. But I keep, my problem is I keep writing new stuff. So like last night even I tried maybe like a bunch of new jokes in, and that's kind of silly for when you're recording. Interesting. But I can't help myself because I keep adding. Well, I was here last night. Oh, you were? I was. I left right away, so I, we didn't talk. Oh, was it that bad? I do that every time. <laughs> Stop. I do that every time. I saw it. We, we leave as soon as it, it's, uh, as soon as the headliner says, thank you, whoever I'm with or if I'm by myself, I hit the road immediately. Like, I'm, I'm out. I try to be. Um, you That's know what's that. funny? So I don't want to wait in line. You know what's funny is that in the front row, I thought my mom's best friend from childhood was there. Like, and I know her. I mean, they've grown up to, I've met her recently yeah and i know her but i thought it was her sitting in the front 
And all night? All night. And I even censored myself with a couple jokes because I, I just got in my head. No. And I I know. And I was kind of like, I just got in my head and I was like, a a a Anne's right there. You know, she's going to think, oh, you know, she's not going to. And and I did, I kind of skipped a couple jokes. And then and then I said, I said, I'm sorry I missed you. I thought she hated it. And I said, I'm sorry I missed you. And she goes, oh, we're coming on. We're coming on Friday. Oh, no. And I was like, that wasn't you? And she's like, I'm often mistaken for other people. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't see the Anne lookalike after the show? No. Interesting. Wow. But the whole show, I was like, my, mom, my mom's friend's right there. And so then every time I talked about my mom, I was kind of got a little in my head because I'm no. like, I mean, I didn't really look at her after a while. I was like, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to make eye contact with her because I'm like doing all my mom jokes and I don't want to make her uncomfortable. And then and she's right. I was, I was convinced. I was like, why is she sitting in the front row? Oh my goodness. Someone else. Do you censor when you know your mom's listening? No, I don't. I don't think I, I, it's not like I did it consciously. There are some new jokes that I'm a little bit on the fence about. And so those were, it's not like I was censoring jokes that I was, that I always do. Sure. It's just, there were some jokes that I was a little on the fence and it, it threw me off the fence. It was like, I'm not, I just can't look at her right now when I'm doing that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Has that happened before? Like, where you there. think, like, uh, oh, uh, you know, that's Ryan Seacrest in the front row, and then it's just like some guy. I've had this. I've had like random moments where I like, like, think an ex is in my in my crowd. Like, someone will look like an ex of mine, and it's like gets in my head where I'm like convinced that they're there. And it's really a weird feeling because I know it's I know they wouldn't come to a show. Oh, I suppose. But sometimes I'm like, is that is that my ex? And then I can't look at that person. You, it's happened several times. Are they trying to get back with me? Is this a joke? It's just I think it's more like you, in your head you're thinking about them, and so then you you know just like if you dream about someone, it's because you're probably thinking about them. So sure. Just project them into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> they're judging me again. Yeah, yeah. yeah right? <laughs> yeah, they're judging me again. Did you have a blue check mark by your name on Twitter yesterday, and do you still? Do you know? Oh, I didn't check. Everybody's Should losing them today. They're losing them today? Let's check. Check right now. Okay. No, this is a like sad I, moment in I, history. I, I literally was, I just accidentally... I'm glad I don't even care. I saw someone make a joke about it earlier today. Oh, really? And then I went... Oh, yeah, and, I don't have it anymore. And then I clicked on their uh, their profile... It still had a check. Then I tried to click on the check. It wouldn't do anything. I backed out, went back. Check is gone. Yeah, my um, my check's gone, but it's weird. I feel exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has changed in my life. You seem really sad about it. I mean, I feel less validated, but... I'm trying to validate myself these days, you that's, know? That's good. Internal validation. So that way, like, blue checks come and go, and you're still secure with yourself. Yeah. Have they sent you something? Like, hey, do you want to... I mean, I wasn't verified. I'm not. I'm nobody, so that doesn't matter. But, like, somebody like you, did, did you get something? Like, hey, now's your last chance. You want to keep it or not? No, but I don't think I get I, anything from... Yeah, I don't think I get anything like that. I see. Yeah, I didn't get that. Now, one of the huge things that I walked that I yeah. came away with the last time you were here yeah. that we talked about is you were taking a break. Oh God, and now I'm not. From social media and now you're not. <sighs> I'm back in full swing. Okay, well let's back up here. Okay. How did it you were like three or four days? Oh, into it was this. amazing when I took the break. It was so smart. How long? I I went a couple weeks. Couple weeks. Without social media. Okay. Maybe three weeks. Okay. And then my the girl that was helping me with it got a job that sh so she couldn't do it anymore, and that threw me off. So then I came back. You didn't try to find someone else right away. No, because she like I, it's hard to find someone who's gonna do it the right way. Like first of all, you're giving somebody your passwords and everything, and so it has to be someone you trust. Yeah. And second of all, it's like you have to kind of retrain them. Like okay, this is what I need done. And third of all, she wasn't charging me much. So it's hard to find someone that's like going to charge as low as she was charging. But it's not a bad idea to try to do it again. 
Because this is a, it is a huge distraction. Do you think she was actually holding out to see if you would offer her more money? No, no. She's a friend, and she's like she like liked doing it, no. but she just got really busy. Yeah. So you got back. So several weeks, then you yeah. got back. My mind started clearing up, and I started feeling more present. And yeah, what did you fill that time with? Of not. Looking at your phone, checking your phone constantly. Were well, you picking it up, looking at it, I just putting it back down? I was connecting to people more, you know. So I would make phone, I would make more phone calls with people, and then I felt in more of a creative space, st- like I was starting to read a bit more and things like that. And yeah, I mean, I'm plenty busy. Yeah, it's not about busyness. It's about like feeling like you need to be check, like that you're missing something. Absolutely, that's what it feels like. Absolutely. So have you made any adjustments, or was that just a little? Um, I think I'm even more addicted now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Erica. <laughs> no. Well, it's only because, like, my managers are always telling me I need to post more, you know, like, post more clips, right? So now I am posting more clips, but then you, like, start checking that more, and you're like, is anybody watching this clip? And then how is this clip doing compared to that clip? And then you start to get, like, into the algorithm madness, which is stupid. But it is help. Like, I've noticed my numbers are growing a lot, you know? So it's working. Unf- so I don't know. I mean... Fortunately and unfortunately, it's working. It's sort of working, but I could be less glued to it. Yeah. TikTok has never worked for me. I've, I... TikTok, I'll post nothing. Nothing happens. But <laughs> <laughs> but but Instagram Reels, it feels like like one video kind of went viral, and I'm getting these. It's hilarious. I'm getting these paragraphs of angry men because it's about male feminism. All these angry men, and they write paragraphs. And now my manager told me that if I respond to them, I'll get even more views. So I've been responding, and it's hilarious. Because I'm like, they're like, you wanted equality. You asked for this. And then I'll write down it, and I'll, I'll be like, well, I don't know if we could get equality if we're all spending all our lives on, on, on this comment section. You know, I don't know. I'll just mess with them. So I... Uh- they're reaching out to you publicly. Like, they could send you a private message to be like, right, well, I don't like well, what you're doing. But. Well, they feel, I don't think it's to me. It's to, they think they matter. Everybody thinks they matter so much, you know? So they write their story. I tried helping a woman with her bag back in 1983, and it was fine. But now, two days ago, someone screamed at me, and you guys want equality, and this is what you, and it's like, dude, it's just a joke. Like they take, like they they take it seriously. They think they matter, and they have n- no life, no life at all. But then I'm like, okay, well, I don't really have a life if I'm responding. <laughs> I I know, I know. That is the thing when you start pointing fingers online. Well, it's funny on, and then on you're like, well, wait, media, I might be doing the same thing. I mean, I was watching um, this clip with Jesse May and um, Jamie Kennedy, and it was like a really, you, you know, Jesse May Peluso. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So she was um, she was saying how social media is really taking us away from ourselves which was so smart like the way she articulated she's like it's taking us away from what we actually enjoy doing like there are things we enjoy doing and we're forgetting those things because we're all so in the phones we're like you know it's like I love yoga I love exercise and then sometimes I don't do it as much because I'm like I've got to post or whatever but um so I thought that was a really good point but then I'm looking at it and I realize I'm looking at it on my phone And it's, you know, that's like where we get all of our information. So even information about hating social media is on social media. I am a member like on Facebook of like a, you know, neighborhood group. Yeah. Somebody yesterday posted a thing, a a post office uh, down the road, not the post office, the fire, uh, the fire station, their flag had been damaged and it was like waving. Mm. It was clearly damaged. Yeah. Right. So this guy went on the neighborhood group and was like. Uh, he's, it was Hudson, Wisconsin. That's where I live. He's like, hey, Hudson, um, take a look at your flag right now. <laughs> and then me and a lot of other people commented like, you could have, there's other ways you could have. Just message him. Let them know. Yeah, so we want it to be, like, you think people want it to be public that they. Yes, I yeah. do. Yeah. And like, so I re- my reply to that guy was, there are classier ways to let them know. There were classier ways to let them know. And I was yeah. like, well, I'm kind of proud of that. And I got a whole yeah. bunch of, you know, like 30 likes or right, whatever. Right, but then you realize you're doing it publicly, e- exactly, too. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like now, like now, here I am calling this, I basically just told this person they have no class. 
But yeah. then how about me doing right. it publicly? Maybe I don't have class either. Right. So I don't I, yeah, I exactly. mean. Exactly. You can't That's win. the other thing about also podcasts I've noticed. It, I'm noticing that like everyone is an expert on like everybody's like an expert on their own opinion. But they make it sound like they're experts. But it's it's an opinion. Oh, yeah. It doesn't come out like, well, I think uh, this would be a good idea. It's like, no, the reason we're all obsessed with social media is because, and we all say it like we know, and it's like, D- this is a podcast. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Anytime I watch podcasts now, I'm like, they're just people talking. <laughs> yes. What we're saying means nothing. That's what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> yeah, see, most things mean nothing is what the point. Yes. Uh, it's 420 today, bro. The day we're recording this, the big pot. That's so uh, funny because, so Garrison Keeler... Um, he, uh, called me. I'm only saying it because some people know who he is. Yes. <laughs> um, who listen? So absolutely. He so he called me today and read his column about how Minnesota is legalizing marijuana. It's probably coming very soon. Yes. Yeah, and he he wrote a really funny column about it about how I I don't I can't remember the exact lines, but about how like he never understood people getting arrested for. For for pot, he's like I don't I you know I don't support pe- people getting arrested just for wanting to be dumb you know <laughs> 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 I'm butchering his joke but it was funny anyway so yeah that's a big thing for Minnesota yeah it, it'll be it'll be a my God it'll be a, a huge thing what uh, can I ask what's your relationship with uh, on stage last night you you uh, talk about doing some um, drugs yeah is that legal to say it on stage. Yeah. I, of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> of course it is. I want to know. I don't know if it was allowed. Do you want to talk about whatever, do you have a relationship with uh, pot at all? No, uh, pot does not work for me at all. Nothing does nothing. Um, I mean, it, it does something, but not the right things. It makes me depressed and tired, lethargic and anxious all at the same time. And I used to work at a pot shop too when I was younger. Where? Um, in L.A. I worked at one, a medicinal marijuana pot shop. And people would come in and I would just like, just be like, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's all you need to sell pot is the word good. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. You were, you were a bud tender? I, that's what it's called. Yeah, I was. I was but they made fun of me because I never smoked. I was the only one there. And they would always like co- try to go home with like tons of it. And they were all potheads. And I loved the people I worked with. Like, I worked with this one guy who was a guitarist. And I played in his, I played cello in his band for a while. So I would work, <laughs> I would work at the pot shop. And then, like, at night, we'd, like, have band practice. And I would play cello in his band. And I thought I was so cool. And I was playing in this band. And no one could hear me play because it's under the band. And that people is play. the ultimate pothead move. But, oh, what do you play? <laughs> Look, you join the band, man. We people, got room for you. They'd come up to me after. They'd be like, you were so good. And I'm like, I know no one can hear me. Like, I, I knew no one could hear me. <laughs> what? Yeah. But yeah, his name was Dylan. We were really good friends. We didn't date or anything, but we were just like chill friend, pothead. You know, we, we worked at the pot shop. You have got to be one of the only people that's ever worked at a pot shop that doesn't Probably. Really use. Yeah, probably. I, I mean, mean honestly. I mean, I tried it all, you know, because they kept saying, like, well, maybe try this one or this one. You know, maybe sativa is better. I tried all of them. And I'm like, it just doesn't work for me. I want it to. Right. You know, I wanted it to. And I would I would enjoy maybe, like, the first 10 minutes with pot. And then it would just, like, go into this decline of bad. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. paranoia, sleeping the whole next day. Sure. But, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Is that place still in business? Do you have any idea? Um, I don't think so. No, the owner, something, they got, I don't know if they got raided, not raided, but they, they were closed down. They were closed down. (laughs) At some Hmm. point. I stopped working there, but it was an interesting time when I worked there because it was such an easy job. You just kind of show up. (laughs) It sells itself. It sells itself and you show up whenever you want. You just like, you know, you just kind of mosey on in. And one guy, one guy was like this. Like, really tall, you know, kind of, like, tough guy. And he always called me princess. He's like, oh, is princess here? Like, because I, I, the second I got there, I'd be like, can I get a coffee? And I would leave right away, and then I'd come back. And like, oh, did princess decide to show up today? <laughs> the ultimate laid-back job. Oh, yeah. It was a perfect job for me. I th- The only jobs I kept and didn't get fired from 
were the pot shop and um, Lululemon, the clothing store. I worked there for like, well, no, I did get fired eventually. But you didn't get fired from there. You got dismissed because you're on to bigger things. Oh, yeah, that's wow. like they sit you down and they're like, we think this chapter should be closing for you and you should be like, you know, more ambitious. And they like say they fire you in a really nice way at Lululemon, like a hippy dippy way. Like we really support your other goals. But also we're taking away your discount. Yeah. And also leave. <laughs> 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 but I love that job and I had some really good friends there. You've outgrown us. Yeah, th- yeah, you've outgrown our pants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, figuratively. Yeah. <laughs> not literally. You've, un- you've uh, outgrown our pants. That is hilarious. Uh, I got a text from my daughter this afternoon. She's trying to make plans after school. I want to read this to you. Mm. She said, I changed the names to protect uh, the people who don't want to be involved in my little podcast here. My daughter texted me, could Becky and her out friend Sarah come over after school? Her out friend? Yeah. So I'm at home today. I see this. And then my wife uh, comes into the room I'm in. She's like, did you see the text from, uh, you know? And I go, yeah. I go, her out friend? I go, what does her sexual orientation have anything to do with her coming over? And she goes, no, she meant our. Our. (laughs) Could Becky and her, uh, her slash our friend that's hilarious. Our friend. Because I was trying to think, to, like, what it was fixed from. Like, I could tell it was a spell check thing, but, like, yeah. I couldn't figure out what. Like, other friend or out. Uh, yeah, yeah, our friend. Okay. Out friend. That's hilarious. I was so confused. Like, why? And that would be kind of, that's probably how teenagers are now. They're like, can my out friend, like, my cool friend. Like, now it's like saying uh, he, she's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So she's I, out. I mean, I'm learning new little phrases and way they talk yeah. all the time. Everybody talks weird now. Yeah. So, um, so that one I was That's like, funny. I better double check that this, this is what is she actually saying here? I don't know. I saw a stat today that said one in eight Americans have worked at McDonald's, specifically McDonald's. Really? Well, that means they're employing a lot of people. Not me. You? Not. No, I have not. No. Did you ever do fast food? Um, I worked at a smoothie. Pl- my first job ever in New York was at working at a smoothie place. Um, and I had this Israeli coworker who was really tough. Like she, she was like, we got to get the smoothies out. Like it was really intense all the time. <laughs> and so I, I think I got fired from that job. And then, um, <laughs> and then I worked at a lot of restaurants, but I never worked at fast food. Did you? Uh, no, no, uh, no, I, I, I don't know because so many people have, it's weird. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I don't know if it was when or where, but if I, I felt like if you got a job at a fast food restaurant where I grew up, like you would be teased relentlessly. Like you don't, that's, you don't wear that outfit. Like you don't wear, Is I that, don't know why. Yeah. I don't I'm know why. I'm trying to think if I even, I didn't even know anyone. Like if I did know them, I didn't know they worked at a fast food place, but I didn't really go to a lot of fast food as a kid. We went to Dunkin' Donuts sometimes. That was about it. I don't, I don't remember doing much with McDonald's. I'm sure we went, but I just don't remember. You don't have memories of Happy Meals? I guess I do. Come on. But more from before. Yeah. Maybe when I lived in Brookline, Massachusetts. Yeah. I, uh, li- like I said, you know, like I always do, I listen back to the last time you were here. Yeah. The podcast. Oh, the podcast. Just, yeah, okay. I was, yeah. oh, I I was like, copy. my set? Yeah. I was so like, how do you have a set so of my... So missing <laughs> copy of your uh, set, <laughs> I'll sell it to you. What jokes am I forgetting? I have it posted on eBay if you want to uh, do buy it now. Uh, I've listened back and one of the things, I don't remember the context, but you mentioned maybe it was where you'd like to live sometime. But you said, oh, is it Old Saybrook? Yeah. Where you have a place for your yeah, family? Yeah, so my family has a house in Old... It's actually, I think, Old Lyme, but it's right next to Old Saybrook. Okay. And it's like this little house, and it's right on the river, and it's really pretty. And my cousin uh, moved really close by, and now they're about to have a kid. So I, I have people around there. I'd love to live in Connecticut. Yeah. I love Connecticut. I've never been, but... It, I it, have it, to get really rich in order to live there. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things, so I'll listen back and then, uh, yeah. you know, I'll search things like in this is city. Like, oh, oh, is there something interesting I could bring up about that? And here's yeah. what I found for Old Saybrook, oh. Con- Connecticut. Connecticut. Is uh, about. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love a good pun and a little play on words. Oh, yeah, same. And I'm wondering if you know about the, uh, what do they call it? The cat uh, sanctuary? It's like one of these places where you pay... You pay 20 bucks and you get to go sit in a room with cats for an hour, basically. Oh, but I'm allergic. Oh, you are. Yeah. Oh. Do you want to know the be name? A sanctuary. Yeah, what's the name? All of the single kitties. All the single kitties? All the single kitties. All the single kitties. I would kitties. fit in. Uh-huh. I'd fit in right with all the kitties. Oh. I do love cats. I just happen to be, maybe I'm not allergic anymore, but I used to be. How did you find out? Because I have a story that. Because I was babysat a cat and it was like, Miserable. I was, cr- you know, t- crying and itchy and horrible. You didn't have one at home. You went to somebody's house. And I babysat a yeah. cat. I brought it to my apartment and oh no, I think it was in New York. And I babysat it, and I'm like, it's fine. And like, there's tears coming down. And you brought that yeah. poison into your home. Yeah, it was bad. I had a sleepover for my, uh, you know, birthday, like in elementary school, mm-hmm. and we had a cat, and a friend of mine that I invited over, like, you know, middle yeah. of the night can barely breathe like wakes me up and like i think i need to call my mom oh no because he was like breaking oh out in hives gosh. and didn't know he was allergic to oh cats. geez yeah i can't imagine as a parent i can't imagine uh getting that phone call when the phone rings at oh, yeah. two in the morning and your your child is at a sleepover you oh Ugh. holy shit that would uh that would be about the worst thing you could possibly imagine uh i saw that your um that sad lemon kind of had a rebirth recently. Yeah, I put it. So I had, I was sitting on the video, which it, it's not like a, it's not shot like a special. I just taped it one shot yeah. of the same show. And I was like, why don't I, I'll just put it out and see, you know, maybe some, maybe some diehard fans will want to watch it. And a lot of people watched it and liked it. And I don't know. It's so weird when your first thing seems to do better than everything after. <laughs> You well, know, it's, it's like my first it was my first album and I was very naive back then. Like I didn't know, you know, I didn't even know really what I was doing. Sure. So I'm just sort of surprised people liked it. I'm happy, but surprised. Yeah. Because I look at it and I see all the ways I think I've improved as a comic, you know, and I I look at, you know, some of. Sure. Oh, okay. Along those lines. Jake, yeah. Jake Johansson was here last week. Oh, He's okay. been doing comedy for 40 years. He's just wow. now throwing out, you know, uh, clips from Letterman from, you know, like the late oh 80s. Oh, my gosh. So think about that. Well, I think that is the thing. Like, we're all so hard on ourselves, but other people aren't like that about our work. You know, like, I look at Sad Lemon and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I'm pausing too much. Or, like, little things annoy me. Sure. Sure. And I'm like, oh, you know. Like, I was, I had so much momentum on that show. And I was like, why am I pausing? But, like, I would let the laugh completely die. You know, and now I don't think, I mean, I pause, I still pause sometimes, but I don't think I would let the laugh just kind of go all the way to silence. <laughs> like, it's like. A, last one, done, done. Last yeah, one, yeah, it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to wait till the laugh is all the way over before I do my next joke. So, but that I'm just hypercritical that, of myself. Yeah, th- exactly. Yeah. That's you being hypercritical. Okay. I saw, has this happened before? You're going to do a show with Bill Burr in Vegas? Yeah. I, I'm opening for him. That's awesome. It, that was kind of a dream I had of, to open for him. I love him. So it hasn't I'm, happened before? No. No, just one coming up here. Just the one coming in up May. in Vegas. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Congrats. I love Bill. I feel like he's, I think he's always great. And he's a Boston guy. So I'm, oh, you know, course. connect with him. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which venue will you be doing with Bill Burr? Um, I might have to look. Uh-oh. At it. Yeah, well, it's, at, it's the big... I don't know if it's a big theater. I keep forgetting the name of it because oh. I'm not familiar with Vegas. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Is it but a, you a, can find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure, for It's sure. a big one. It's like a f- uh, f- couple thousand. It's the one that seats. Thou- I think it seats 5,000 or something. No, 200,000. No. <laughs> no. No, no, Does no, anyone no, do no, 200,000? No. Uh, there's Is the stadium a stadium. The... Football stadium in Michigan for the Wolverines is like 150 oh my or something God. like that. Jeez. Which clearly those people in the top can't see a thing. It's just uh, you know. Yeah. For the experience, yeah, I don't. I, guess. I don't like crowds, so I don't think I would enjoy going to a any show in a stadium. I no. just don't like that. No, no. I, I hear like you. a club. I love Acme. It's like the perfect club. You know, look at it. Don't you just love it? Uh, 
Me? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, do love I just, it. The way everything about it is a perfect club. Like, there's no... I can't think of any setup that would be more perfect than this to, to do anything, you know, with the low ceilings and the way the chairs are and how close they are to the stage and the lighting, like everything's perfect. Uh, and a, a thing that I always pick up on when I've gone to other clubs is that people won't be eating during your show here. Yes, there's no moving around. Yeah, it's all about the comedy. It's all just yep. authentic, real comedy. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So what else is planned for this year? Besides uh, recording this week, I'm supposed and, to and go Bill to in May. I'm supposed to go to Israel. Oh my! Yeah, in um, the end of May, I'm okay. going to Israel. Okay. Yeah, with a couple other comics to perform. To perform. Okay. So that should be fun. Have you been there before? No. No. Never been. All right. I would like to go. My dad was Jewish, and so I don't, more Russian blood though, but. Will you bring that up when you're there? Yeah, I think I will. <laughs> I think I could do my Jewish joke Heck that I yeah. did last night. I mean, yeah. what do I know? Sure, yeah, you can. <laughs> I think I can. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Because my last name was Rosenblum, you know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, my grandfather changed it. That's right. I think you said that before. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, I forgot yes, that. Yes, that was yes. a joke I forgot to do about how my... Well, it's not really a joke, but my dad's dad changed it because he was a pot and pan sales person. And he would, you know, go door, door to door selling pots and pans. And he thought that he wasn't doing a good job because of his last name. So he changed it to Rhodes. And my dad was like, I think he was maybe just not a good salesperson. <laughs> 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 it's easier to blame something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no, no. It's easier to blame something else. Oh, uh, well, let's see here. Is there anything else I wanted to bring up to you before we go? Um, let's see here. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Um... There's something you mentioned on stage. Oh, this yeah. was the thing before we started recording. You were like, I feel like you're cramming for the podcast. You were teasing me a little. That's <laughs> yeah. fine. I, I deserve that. No, but it's because I was late, so I was putting <laughs> the blame on you. <laughs> uh, so I was texting my wife, and I was asking her if she could remind me of a name because last night, part of your, uh, one of the things you talk about on stage is about watching all of the, um, I hope this isn't, this isn't spoiling your punchlines or anything. I don't think so. Uh, Watching documentaries. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then a lot, of, like, who wasn't a pedophile, basically, yeah. right? We'll just say it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who wasn't a pedophile? Yeah, who was not a pedophile? Because so many of these, you end up showing They're like, all about too? pedophiles. Them That's, too? I mean, not to spoil my own joke, but it, it does feel like we're much more fascinated by by bad people yeah. in general. Absolutely. As a society, we, we want to we want to know. And I actually think there might be a psychological reason because I think we all have a side of us that has bad thoughts and disturbing thoughts and, you know, unhealthy thoughts. And so, we, so we're fascinated by people who act on it because most people don't act on it. And we're like, how did they do that? Because mm -hmm. I have the thought. I want to, you know... Not that I want to do anything like that, but like, you know, you just you're just fascinated by human nature. What gets you from point A to point B? I couldn't agree. Because everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Because otherwise, why are we so fast? I mean, there's so many serial killer documentaries and, and films and shows. And Ted Lasso is probably the only good guy on TV that we're interested in for now. Right. For well, now. Can you think of any other good, no, uh, good well, guy? No, no. I'm saying that the. the Enjoy Ted Lasso for now because a little, something will come out. Season oh, no, no, five. No. There, there's oh, you think he's going to be a pedophile? <laughs> <laughs> Season five of Ted Lasso. The whole thing. The whole time he was not. It was a what fever he dream. Thought. He's a pedophile. No. Uh, so the other few weeks ago, it just this is what uh, when you did that joke last night, it was like, yeah. oh my god, this happened to us in real life here. My wife and I. We, a few weeks ago, she was. We were talking about music, and she's like, uh, she goes, oh, she goes, where you grew up, did you know the song? And then she, she said it to me. I'm like, I have no idea who that is. Mm. She's like, what? She goes, you, you said you liked rap growing up, and you grew up where you grew up. You don't know who this is? I'm like, I have no idea who this is. So I looked it up, and I go, and then I had to break it to her that this rapper that she used to like so much is, it is a pedophile. Who was it? South Park <laughs> Mexican is his name. Do you have any idea who that is? No. Do you have I any idea who that is in the back of the room? South Park Mexican? So that's a name? Yes. yes. South Park Mexican? It has nothing to do with the cartoon, as far as I know. But that's his name. 
name? That's his stage name. Oh, South, stage South name. South Park Mexican. Yes. And he's a pedophile? S- SPM. Yes. A pedophile. So I had to, like, we're in the car and my wife's driving. And she's like, well, did you ever listen to South Park Mexican? I'm like, I've never heard of him. And I'm sitting there looking it up. And then the very first thing comes up, like, is blah, 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 incarcerated, da, 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 pedophile. And I'm just oh like, my oh, God. are you kidding me? Oh, I can't wait to tell her this. I go, honey, when we get home, don't you go ahead and Google them. And how, and, and did you listen to the music? It's awful. And she has, <laughs> she's taken it. This gets into a whole other thing that we don't have okay. time for. But okay. like I, I and I've I refuse to acknowledge Michael Jackson's dark side. You refuse to acknowledge it because you don't because you like his music? Yes. Cause I'm so from, you think that basically if someone has a bad side but their art is so good, you can look past it. I'm not it. saying that's right. I'm saying that's what I'm doing. I'm not saying this it's right. This is hilarious. My nephew said the funniest thing. Um someone asked uh, him what he thought of Michael Jackson or something. And he goes, and he's eight. He goes, I'm a fan of his music. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I think he said something like that. I'm like, he like made it very specific. It's about his music, but not him. I don't like his acting or how he is with young boys. Yeah, (laughs) I'm a fan of his music. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a priceless moment yeah. in my life. I got to go. Oh, honey. So, uh, so now, now so, she has uh, officially taken him off of her Spotify for the record. Oh, so I okay. So yes, yeah, so I she, hear you. So she can't look the other way. Right. Yes. But yeah. maybe it's because. Do you think that that bit has a point? What I, you know, I'm not going to give away my own bit. But do you think that I'm making a point that is relatable? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh okay. yes. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> some people are better than others though some people can just be like i'm not gonna listen to this person's whatever and sometimes you're like but selfishly i can separate because i enjoy what that music does for me i'm not i mean i'm really not proud of that i just i you're not proud of what of, of my looking the other way with michael jackson but you're not garbage. looking the other way you're just like i like his music so much that i i can separate it yeah emotionally from the artist thank you and plus, i'm also not I going think, no give him a chance well give plus when chance. someone is dead don't you think it's different when they're dead because because now it's like what they left behind and if they left behind something good well then at least they left something good behind it's not like he's getting that money like when you listen to a song by michael jackson he doesn't get anything now that's true right that's true you're not like Whereas if you if you listen to an artist that's alive right now and, and you're giving them your money, you're buying something from them, you're supporting them still to maybe you're still maybe enabling them. Yeah. You can't enable Michael Jackson anymore. True. And I already own all the Michael Jackson stuff I want to, so you know what I mean? Like I already have the songs. Yeah. I don't I don't I'm not paying for access to them. Right. That was kind of my that, point yeah. with like Marilyn Manson. It's like you know, su- it's like, wait, now I'm supporting, mm-hmm. you know, by accident. Yeah, no, exactly. By, yeah. I'm, now I'm giving away my own joke, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know what she means by yeah, Marilyn Manson. Yeah, if you want to know what I'm talking about. Get over to Acme. Come to Acme. This weekend. This weekend, four, five more shows. Well, tonight sold out. Mm-hmm. And then four more. Yeah. For all the weekend. Two Friday, yeah. two Saturday. I'm going to get this hour figured out by Saturday. <laughs> That's my goal. You officially have a deadline. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Which is now. <laughs> Whether you like to, yeah, we've hit now. it. We're there. We're there right now. Yeah. Um thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. As Justin. always. Yeah. Um we do this each and every week here at Acme. And if people, uh, we do video that is on YouTube. We do the podcast version, the audio only, which is available everywhere you can find a podcast. Oh. I mean, we don't have to give the exact places. You're it's almost everywhere. at 500. We're almost at 500 of these things. Wow. And uh, there's quite a few to choose from. So if you want to feel free to uh, subscribe and do a review. We could always use more numbers on the YouTube. We could always use more reviews on the podcast apps as well. Wonderful. And I will uh, send you a direct link to give you a review as soon as we're done. How here. do you feel about how how did this go for you? Today's? Yeah. What's your review? Um, out of creativity, yeah. I give it a nine. Oh, out pretty of good. 10. Yeah. Okay. And, and then 
<laughs> creativity. Yeah, I got a big cre. And then he's like, and um, funny, maybe a three. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> I can't recommend enough coming to see your show this week. Oh, you have thanks. an opener that I've never seen before. Yeah, Jeffrey Baldinger. There you go. And Tommy Ryman. Who I, Tommy Ryman. No, he's fuck. He's the best. He's the best. He headlines here so all the time. So great. How. He, I'm sure he was great last night. I didn't see his set, so yes. but uh, but he's always good. So, so. you're basically getting uh, you're getting two headliners and one feature. I think Jeffrey might even sometimes headline. He's really good yeah. and he's in LA. So new, my tummy's growling. Yeah, <laughs> new comics, old comics. Yep. Congrats, Erica. Thanks, Justin. <laughs>